my name is Dr. Rhonda Basharab, and I'm here for my weekly news blog on MMA News League. As you may or may not know, Shane Carwin recently posted on his personal blog that he's pulling out a UFC 125 secondary to low back pain in an injury that he sustained. There's some little information on there about an MRI and some depiction that his injury may be severe enough that may or may not require surgery. I'm here to talk about what kind of injuries happen to the low back that may cause a fighter to pull out of a fight or what can a fighter really endure to stay in the fight and see it the long haul and how to make that decision and what it all entails when you have back pain and how do you get it better. Most people don't realize that four out of five people suffer from low back pain. Just in the common population, it's one of the top five reasons why people go to an emergency room or an urgent care annually. So when you get back down to what really are the numbers that fighters have to sustain, it's probably one out of three fighters have had some kind of low back injury at some point during their careers. It really is rate limiting during the training and certainly it's rate limiting to competition and sometimes causes fighters to pull out of fights. There's been numerous fighters in the UFC who have had back issues and require surgical intervention, Tito Ortiz being one of them. Diego Silva in his UFC fight against Rashad Evans was fighting with three herniated discs and definitely felt the pain throughout the camp as well as the competition as a result of that injury. We're continuing to talk about lumbar spine injuries in MMA and how it impacts a fighter's ability to compete. This was prompted by Shane Carwin's recent pullout from UFC 125 secondary to a low back injury. I'm going to try and break down low back injuries in a simplified form so you can kind of get what it is that he may be dealing with and other fighters in the UFC who have had to pull out and or compromise their ability to compete secondary to low back injuries. Low back injuries are often talked about as pinched nerves, disc problems, or back sprains or strains are thrown out their back. Back pain 101. Basically, the spine has lots of blocks lined one on top of each other. The low back has five blocks, and in between each bony block, there is a little jelly donut that has a shock absorber cushion that allows for us to handle the stress that occurs to the low back with jumping, running, pounding, and daily activities. A lot of people ask, what's the difference between a bulging disc and a herniated disc, and how much pain does each one of these cost? 30% of the population actually has a bulging disc, and they don't have any symptoms. A bulging disc is the equivalent of having the jelly in a jelly donut push against the wall. Sometimes this tickles the nerve as it's coming out of the spinal cord and can create irritation. A herniated disc is having the jelly donut have a big hole in it and the jelly squirting out and touching the nerve. Once the nerve gets touched and irritated, you'll get sharp pain going down your back and into your low leg. If you ever hit your funny bone, you've now experienced what nerve pain feels like, and it's definitely quite troublesome and rate limiting. When one person goes to the doctor, initially the doctor will do an evaluation and determine if x-rays or an MRI are necessary. What does an x-ray tell the doctor? Basically, the x-rays tell the doctor if there's any arthritis, broken bones, or changes in the lumbar spine alignment. The MRI is a diagnostic test that gets a lot more detailed and talks about the ligaments, the nerves, and the discs, and whether or not they're pinching on the nerve. Most of the times a herniated disc or a bulging disc can be determined by the MRI. This can't be determined by the x-ray. So really, what is a pinched nerve? The nerve gets pinched in several forms. First of all, the spinal cord is like the circuit breaker in your home. There's lots of electrical wires that go from the spinal cord and go into the leg to give you motor and sensory capabilities. Those wires are relative to what block they're coming from, and each one will go to different parts of the leg and the low back. You can get a pinched nerve by the nerve getting irritated and pinched as it's coming from the spinal cord through the canal and into the lower leg or from the jelly pushing up against it and irritating it from where it's at at the spinal cord. A lot of people will have something called mechanical back pain. This is when the blocks are misaligned or if you strained and pulled out your back secondary to a ligament, tendon, or muscular injury. Many of the treatments for low back pain include manual and physical therapy, which includes chiropractic care, physical therapy, and a lot of athletes will also entertain doing acupuncture. Medications are always 
a source to reduce the inflammation of the nerves and decrease the pain in the low back from muscle spasms. Sometimes muscle relaxants can be used if there's significant amount of muscle spasms in the low back. Preventive measures are also very important in order to balance the strength, balance the strength in the low back and the abdomen and improve flexibility. Sometimes people will get injections to their low back and this is when the nerve is really irritated and the other measures have not worked. If the conservative measures of medicine, manual and physical therapy, the injections and preventative measures haven't worked, surgery is always a consideration. However, surgery should be the last resort and the data should be acquired to make sure that this is a possibility for the athlete.